Welcome to episode 183 of Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece. My name is Mylinda the Butterworth, and today we conclude our tale with part 7 of the love story of Eros and Psyche. When night had passed, Aphrodite called Psyche and said, Do you see that forest that extends out in length with the river? There are great sheep shining like gold, and keep by no manner of person. I command thee you go to and bring me home some of the wool of their fleeces. Psyche arose willingly, not to do her bidding, but to throw herself headlong into the water to end her sorrow. Then a green reed, inspired by divine inspiration with a gracious tune and melody, said, O oh, Psyche, I pray thee not to trouble or pollute my water by the death of thee, and yet beware that thou go not towards the terrible sheep of this coast, but wait until the heat of the sun be past. For when the sun is hottest, they are most dangerous and furious, with their sharp horns, their stony foreheads, and their gaping throats, at which time they arm themselves, cause danger to mankind. But if you wait till past midday, and the heat is moderate, and they have refreshed themselves in the river, then you can hide here by me under this great plain tree, and as soon as their great fury is past, you can go among the thickets and bushes under the woodside and gather the locks of their golden fleeces, which you shall find caught in the briars. Thus spoke the gentle and benign reed, showing Psyche a way to save her life, which she bare well in memory, and with all diligence went and gathered great bunches of fleece and put them in her apron, and carried them home to Aphrodite. This second labor, however, did not please her, nor give her sufficient proof of the good service that Psyche provided. But with that sour resemblance of laughter, she said, <laughs> Of certainty I know that this is not thy fact, but I will prove if you are of so stout a courage and singular diligence as you seem. Then, Aphrodite spoke unto Psyche again, saying, See the top of yonder great hill where runs down water of black and deadly color, which nourishes the floods of Styx and Cotus? I charge thee go there and bring me a vessel of that water. She gave her a crystal bottle and then threatened her rigorously. Poor Psyche went in all haste to the top of the mountain, rather to end her life than to fetch any water, and when she was come up to the ridge of the hill, she perceived that it was impossible to bring it to pass, for she saw a great rock gushing out most horrible fountains of water which ran down and fell by many stops and passages into the valley beneath. On each side she saw great dragons stretching out their long and bloody necks that never slept, but were appointed to keep the river there. The water seemed to say, Away, away, what wilt thou do? Fly, fly, or else thou wilt be slain. Then Psyche, seeing the impossibility of this affair, stood still as though she were transformed into stone. And although she was present in body, yet was she absent in spirit and sense by reason of the great peril which she saw and so such that she could not comfort herself with weeping, such was the present danger she was in. But the royal bird of great Zeus, the eagle, remembering his old service which he had done, whereby the prick of arrows he brought up the boy Ganymede to the heavens, to be made the butler of Zeus, and minding to show the like service in the person of the wife of Eros, came from the high house of the skies and said unto Psyche, O oh, simple woman, without all experience, do you think to get or dip up any drop of this dreadful water? No, no, I assure you that you will never be able to come to attain it, for the gods themselves do greatly fear at the sight thereof. What? Have you not heard that it is a custom among men to swear by the puissance of the gods? And the gods do swear by the majesty of the river Styx. But give me thy bottle." And suddenly he took it, and filled it with the water of the river, and taking his flight through those cruel and horrible dragons, brought it unto Psyche, 
who being very joyful thereof, presented it to Aphrodite, who would not be appeased. But menacing more and more said, What? You seem to be a witch and enchantress that bring these things to pass. I will give you one more task. Take this box and go to the underworld to Persephone and ask her to send me a little of her beauty, as much as will serve me the space of one day, and that shall I consume away since my son fell sick. But return again quickly, for I must dress myself and go to the theatre of the gods. Then poor Psyche perceived the end of all her fortune, thinking she should never return, and not without cause, as she was compelled to go to the gulf and furies of hell. Without any further delay, she went up to a high tower to throw herself down headlong, thinking it was the next and easiest way to the underworld. But the tower, as inspired, spoke to her, saying, Oh, poor child, why do you go about to slay yourself? Why do you rashly yield to your last peril and danger? Know that if your spirit be separated from your body, you shall surely go to the underworld and never return again. Wherefore, listen to me. Lacedaemon, a city of Greece, is not far hence. Go thou thither, and inquire of the hill Teneris, where you will find a hole leading to the underworld, even to the palace of Hades. But take heed that you do not go empty-handed to that place of darkness, but carry two sops, sodden in the flour of barley and honey in thy hands, and two halfpence in thy mouth. And when thou hast passed a good part of that way, thou shalt see a lame ass carrying of wood, and a lame fellow driving him, who will desire thee to give him up the sticks that fall down. But pass on, and do nothing. By and by you will come to the river of the underworld, Whereas Charon is ferryman, who will first have his fare paid him, before he will carry the souls over the river in his boat, whereby you may see that avarice reign among the dead. Neither Charon nor Hades will do anything for naught. For it be a poor man that would pass over, and has no money. He should be compelled to die in his journey, before they will show him any relief. Wherefore, deliver to Charon one of the halfpence which you hold for your passage, and let him receive it out of thy mouth. And it shall come to pass, as you are sitting in the boat, you will see an old man swimming on the top of the river, holding up his deadly hands, and desiring thee to receive him into the bark. But don't listen to his piteous cry. When you are passed over the flood, you shall see an old woman spinning who will ask you to help her. But beware you do not consent unto them in any case, for these are like baits and traps that Aphrodite set to make you drop one of thy sops. And don't think that keeping of your sops is a light matter, for if you lose one of them you can be assured you will never return again to this world. Then you will see a great and marvelous dog with three heads barking continually at the souls that enter in. By reason, he can do them no harm. He lies day and night before the gate of Persephone and watches over the house of Hades with great diligence. If you cast one of the sops of honey cakes, you will have access to Persephone without danger. She will cheer you up and entertain you with delicate meat and drink, but do not sit on the ground or eat anything except the brown bread and tell her your message. And when you have received such beauty as she gives you, as you return, calm the rage of the dock with the other sop and give your other halfpenny to stingy Charon, and come back the same way as you came in. But above all things, do not look into the box, neither be curious about the treasure of the divine beauty. In this manner, the tower instructed Psyche as to what she should do, 
and immediately she took two halfpence, two sops or honey cakes, and all things necessary, and went to the mountain Teneris to go towards the underworld. Psyche then passed the lame ass, paid her halfpenny for passage, neglected the old man in the river, denied to help the woman spinning, and filled the ravenous mouth of the dog with a sop. She came to the chamber of Persephone. There, Psyche would not sit in any royal seat, nor eat any delicate meats, but kneeling at the feet of Persephone was only contented with coarse bread, delivered her message, and after she received a mystical secret in the box, she departed and stopped the mouth of a dog with the other sop and paid the boatman with the other half penny. When Psyche was returned from the underworld to the light of the world, she was ravished with great desire, saying, My husband once told me I was beautiful. Perhaps after all my trials he may not think so. Perhaps I could keep a little of it for myself. And before long she opened the box, but immediately was overcome by a deep sleep, and she lay on the ground as if she were dead. But Eros... Being now healed of his wound and illness, could not endure the absence of Psyche. He burst out of the locked door of his chamber, and receiving his wings, took his flight towards his loving wife. Upon finding her, he tenderly wiped away the spell of sleep, put again in the box, and awakened her with the tip of one of his arrows, saying, "'Oh, wretched scoundrel, you are well-nigh perished again over your curiosity. Well, Go now to my mother with the box, and in the meantime I will provide for all things accordingly. With that he took his flight into the air, and Psyche brought her present to Aphrodite. Eros, being more and more in love with Psyche, and fearing the displeasure of his mother, did pierce into the heavens and arrive before Zeus to declare his cause. Soon after, Zeus embraced him, saying, O oh, my beloved son! Although you have not given due reverence and honor to me as you ought to do, but have rather wounded my breast, whereby the laws and order of the elements and the planets be disposed with continual assaults and against all laws, and the discipline Julia, and the utility of the public wheel in transforming my divine beauty into serpents, fire, savage beasts, birds, and bulls, Albeit, remembering my modesty and that I have nourished you with mine own proper hands, I will do and accomplish all you desire, so that you can beware of spiteful and envious persons. And if there be any excellent maiden of comely beauty in the world, remember yet the benefit which I shall show unto thee by recompense of her love towards me again. When he finished speaking, he commanded Hermes to call all the gods to counsel, and if any of the celestial powers did not appear, he should be condemned in ten thousand pounds, which sentence was such a terror to all the gods that the high theatre was replenished, and Zeus began to speak in this sort. O ye gods, registered in the book of the muses, you all know this young man Eros, whom I have nourished with mine own hands, whose raging flames of his first youth I thought best to bridle and restrain. Yet it is enough that he is defamed in every place for his adulterous living, whereupon all occasion ought to be taken away by this marriage. He has chosen a maiden that loves him well and hath bereaved her of her virginity. Let him have her still and possess her according to his own pleasure. Then he returned to Aphrodite and said, And you, my daughter, take you no care. Do not fear the dishonor of your progeny and estate. Also any guards that this is a mortal marriage, for it seems to me just, lawful, and legitimate by civil law. After that, Zeus commanded Eros to bring Psyche into the palace of heaven. When she arrived, Zeus said, See this mortal girl whom Eros loves. No mortal can have Aphrodite's beauty, but Psyche has brought some of that beauty to us. So give her the food and drink of the gods, and let her be one of us, never to die, 
never to be separated again from her eternal love, and we shall make her the goddess of the soul. By and by the great banquet and marriage feast was sumptuously prepared. Hero sat down with his dear spouse between his arms. Hera likewise with Zeus and all the other gods in order. Ganymede filled the goblet of Zeus, and Bacchus served the rest. Their drink was nectar, the wine of the gods. Festus prepared supper. The hours decked up the house with roses and other sweet smells. The graces threw about the balm. The muses sang with sweet harmony. Apollo tuned pleasantly to the harp. Aphrodite danced finely. Satire and Pan played on their pipes, and so Psyche was married to Eros, and soon after she bore a child whom we called Hedone, or the goddess of joy. And here is where I end the tale of Eros and Psyche. We'll all be back with more tales, many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.